Hello fellow Tone Hunters, today we're going to flip the script and talk about five pedals that I don't think you should buy if you're playing alternative rock and shoegaze guitar styles. Now before we begin, I just want to say that I don't actually think the pedals I'm going to look at here are bad necessarily, I just think that your money is better spent elsewhere. I think as guitarists we can get caught in the trap of thinking that we need that one next pedal that's going to make everything just sound better. And while I'm definitely guilty of doing that, I do think that sometimes it's a good idea to take a step back and just look what do you actually need and what's just going to be bought, used once and then stuck in a drawer for the rest of his life. And so when we go through each pedal that I don't think is particularly important for your overall sound, I'm going to offer alternative pedals that I would use instead or basically how to get that same sound from your own existing rig. Okay, so first up, the guitar tuner. No, I'm sorry. I'm only joking. But seriously, why is the most important pedal so boring? Anyway, now we've got that terrific joke out of the way, let's go on to our first actual pedal that I don't think you should buy. And that's going to be a compressor pedal, just like this one here. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that compression can be really good for levelling out sounds and stuff, but I think as a pedal, as a standalone pedal, do you really need that thing in your board? In my opinion, in all of the scenarios I can think of, live, recording, and even like band practicing and playing at home, I can't think of a time that a compressor pedal on a guitar would be absolutely essential. I think for recording, with DAWs being so accessible now, if you wanted a guitar sound that was super squashed, I think you could just add it in post. Even just like with the stock Logic or GarageBand compressors, I think they'd do a really good job of that. And then in a live situation, if you're you're playing through a PA system, the live engineer out the front's probably going to deal with all the compression and stuff, so you don't even need to worry about that. And if you're using any form of distortion, the distortion's going to compress the signal anyway, so do you really need that to be compressed more? However, I think people may push back on this a little bit and say there is some scenarios where it could be useful. For instance, the song Lazy Eye by Silver Sun Pickups definitely has a ridiculously long sustaining lead, and some of the Smashing Pumpkin stuff does too, but I do think you'd get pretty far with just using your fuzz pedal and a chorus and just cranking up that sustain on the fuzz pedal so it gives you loads of sustain anyway. For me, there's probably one other scenario that might have changed my mind a little bit on a compression pedal, and that would be trying to get the same sounds that Radiohead have in In Rainbows. There's definitely clean guitars in that album that are really, really squashed, and it just sounds really cool with them having absolutely no dynamics in the guitar sound. But again, I would hazard a guess that that's going through some really nice outboard compressors like the 1176 or something, and it's not actually a compression pedal in Tom, Johnny, or Ed's boards. Okay, so let's introduce the second pedal that I don't think you need to bother buying, and that would be an equalizer pedal. And I think this makes a perfect segue on from the compressor, in that it's a similar reason to the compressor that I probably wouldn't buy one. I mean, I think if you were playing metal or jazz or something, where you had to be more meticulous about your tone and the different frequencies in it, then it might be something that's worthwhile. But for like alt and shoegaze styles, where basically you're trying to make these like massive sonic landscapes, I think you're far better off spending more time dialing in your amp or your pedals or even the tone on your guitar than spending money on something like this. And likewise with the compressor, if you're playing live, your engineer is going to sweep through all the frequencies that sound really gnarly out front, and if you're recording guitar, you can just whip those horrible frequencies out in post-production. I'd also like to push back on myself a little bit and say that when you put on certain pedals, like for instance the Big Muff, it obviously scoops the mids a lot, so maybe you could have an EQ pedal like this that came on simultaneously and just boosted some of those mids a little bit. But yeah, I think on the whole, you probably don't need to be buying an EQ pedal. Just really look at dialing in the tone of those pedals and your amp settings as well. I would say look out for those kind of high-end frequencies and also look to push mids back in in your amp. Okay, so moving on to our third pedal that I don't think you should buy. And this really pains me to say, it's going to be 
the phase shifter. Here we've got the boss one and we've also got the small stone. Now I know that some of my favourite records of all time have had phase shifters all over them. But my reason for saying that I don't think I would buy it is purely because I think it's one of those effects pedals that so obviously screams I'm a phase shifter that for 2023 I think it's really hard to get away with getting that in your music. To me, other things that sit in the same bracket are like flanger pedals and wah pedals. I think they just sound really dated. Like I know there's probably way better guitarists than me that can make these things sound cool, but whenever I put them on, it just instantly dates my music and I find it really hard to look past that. I think if you're looking for a modulation pedal to do something similar, but maybe in a more modern way, I would go with a chorus because I think although they are from that era and they can sound dated on certain records and certain styles. I think if you're playing the right chords and stuff, you can make chorus pedals still sound really cool even to this day. I mean, look at bands like Turnstile who are adding chorus sounds into hardcore punk. I mean, it just sounds so cool. And actually, as I mentioned in this video here, I personally don't even think you necessarily need a chorus pedal. I think you can get something similar from this digital delay here, the Boss DD7. I think this is like such an amazing pedal. It does delay, reverse delay, and the modulation setting on certain parameters can sound really chorusy. So you could probably do everything in one pedal if you really wanted and you didn't want to spend any extra money. But I mean, I do find it hard to get away from how amazing this thing sounds. Anyway, should we have a quick listen to the difference between the chorus and the phaser? And maybe you'll also hear how modern this sounds compared to how dated the phaser sounds. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I feel about it. Okay, what did you think? I still think that this sounds a lot more modern than this. And that's why I'd definitely buy the chorus over the phaser if I didn't already have that pedal. Okay, so moving on to number four of the five pedals that I wouldn't bother buying, and it is the feedback booster. Now this thing is a bit of a weird one because I would have thought like 100% why does anyone need a feedback booster? But I did actually plug it in recently and it sounded pretty cool. Like we got some really cool feedback sounds going into choruses and stuff. And I think in a live situation you probably could use it or like in band practice and stuff. Say if you were practicing really quietly or something and you're struggling to get feedback. But I think if you were practicing quietly why would you really need feedback anyway? Like, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But I think with the style of guitar that we're kind of looking at playing here, we're playing with Jazz Masters, Jaguars, kind of single coil, which just naturally pick up like loads of feedback, especially with crank amps or really turned up fuzz and distortion pedals that we're often using. I mean, have you ever stood next to an amp with a Jaguar or a Jazz Master? It just doesn't want to shut up. Now I'm not sure how much this thing's actually worth, so let's have a look and see how much you'll save. Boss Feedbacker Booster. 250 quid? 605 pound? What? Maybe this thing's better than I thought it was. Anyway, I'd definitely avoid that if you can, unless you have any niche needs for feedback that you just can't get it from your amp for some reason. Okay, so we're nearly there. This is the fifth and final pedal that I wouldn't bother buying if you want to play alt-rock kind of shoegazy indie guitar. And this one is actually really painful to say as well. It's the tremolo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I know it's on some of the greatest records of all time. It's all over the bends, which is one of those albums that I would say has absolutely impeccable guitar tone. And the beginning of Planet Telex in particular, when that tremolo just comes in, it just sounds so cool. So now my reasoning for why I don't think that you should bother buying tremolo. And I think it's the same reason as the phaser. Basically, although these things are super fun to play with, I do think that they're another pedal that does sound stuck in the past a little bit. When you hear a tremolo, you instantly think of those like 
90s records, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but I think throughout musical history there's a lot of elements in styles and sounds and stuff that sound part of an era. For instance, during the 2000s, those kind of indie bands that were all playing like 16s on the hi-hats, I think they sound really cool, but I remember like every single band did it, and whenever I hear it now, it really just transports me back to that time. And that's kind of how I feel about Tremolo. Just remember though, this is all about making informed decisions, and these are just my opinions, and basically, I'm just trying to help you save a little bit of money on the pedals that I don't think are particularly necessary, and I think you can pretty much either get them from other pedals that do more in general or just get them from the sounds you've already got in your rig. Now let me know in the comments whether you think I'm full of absolute rubbish or you agree with me. And then watch this video here next for more of this kind of stuff.